Oh, hey there. Welcome to your weekly forecast. This is for July 7 and onward. You are watching another episode of Absalom, the art of astrology and demon slaying. My name is Oak. I run Oak Astrology School. I'm a holistic chef, a matchmaker, and a ritualist. Um, it's my job pretty much to give you the information for the week in these ways that are grounding, supportive, loving, and definitely honest. All of this done with just the right amount of sass. <laughs> it's a part of my personality that I cannot divorce from. <laughs> so if you really enjoy these messages every week, you know, feel free to like, subscribe, share, leave a comment. These things just keep that energetic exchange flowing and also they make sure that the people that need these messages are going to find them. So we're going to get into this upcoming week, which is actually very different from last week. Um, this week I'm titling, by the way, I'm titling it, Who Farts in a Rose Garden? <laughs> and we'll get into that. Um, but first, just a, a bit of a recap. Uh, last week was tiring. It was exhausting, actually. And factors that contributed to that were that there was a new moon in Cancer on Friday, just a few days ago. And then in the earlier part of last week, there was Neptune stationing retrograde. And so we will feel that for a few days before, a few days after. And so actually the whole week was flavored by Neptune retrograde. And it wouldn't have even been that illogical for you to just been like out, tired, like lethargy, exhaustion, incapacitated. And then on top of that, we had this new moon in Cancer, which is always like quite tender and new moons tend to be sleepy as well. So just saying that, you know, as... This upcoming week features a Mars-Uranus conjunction, which we'll talk about in length. That is actually like not sleepy. That is excitable and maybe sleep less. <laughs> so big, big contrast, which we need. We need that umph. We need a little bit more of that pep. So uh, yeah, excited to report on that. It will definitely have other implications. But as we recap just a little bit of last week, I was saying that on Tuesday, that was what, maybe July 1st or so, July, July 2nd, that pay attention to this day. The sun would be square to the nodes and the nodes represent the eclipse points. So the sun traveling right in between eclipse season and that would definitely create uh, realizations, probably just a pivot point for our, our journey throughout the year and you know lo and behold the day before so on last Monday the Supreme Court ruled that the president has a particular level of immunity from prosecution which you know that establishes something similar to a monarchy in this country but what that also does is it possibly overturns Trump's trial that is scheduled for July 11 this upcoming week and you know he is he is convicted for 34 counts of felony he was convicted in the end of May so May 30th and in my podcast that week for for May 30th I was suggesting that Trump's trial being so close to a Mars Uranus conjunction we can expect that there will be possibly a reversal we can expect that there will be some kind of, you know, clause or something can come up that will change what we think that this can actually result in. So there it is. That's how astrology works, you guys. <laughs> and that's just really annoying and frustrating because there's a big chance that his case is going to be overturned. And um, yeah. You know, the, this sun square the nodes, just that, that turning point and this being the midpoint between eclipses. We have to remember that the eclipse that happened in April, that that total solar eclipse that like literally everyone traveled to the East Coast in order to watch that eclipse. There's stuff that is going to be reactivated or, or we're going to be having developments in storylines from April and something else and this is something that I perceived previously is that as like 
that entire eclipse path that went from Texas all the way up to the Northeast in the, in the States, it was, I was really concerned with like the weather patterns. And so like, as of, you know, today's Sunday, July 7, there is definitely, I think that Hurricane Barrel is actually reaching the coast of Texas, probably like as I'm recording this. And so it, it's just interesting like we're very early into the summer and there's already these like pretty strong hurricanes so remember we had that eclipse in april and there was like this very light earthquake in new york so I'm not trying to like predict natural disaster that's not my specialty when it comes to this work with astrology but i'm just notating that you know astrology helps us recognize patterning and so, yeah, that's just, you know, stuff that was going on in the past week. Something else that I noticed was that a lot of TikTok creators that have large followings, primarily people of color and, and a lot of black creators, they had their accounts banned. And these are people that are sharing information about what's actually happening in the news. You can call it conspiracy, but this day and age, conspiracy that we would have thought of as conspiracy 10 years ago is, is proving to be true. And I think that that's definitely thanks to um, Pluto and Aquarius. And I can go into that in another time. But something that I noticed last week is that, yes, a lot of these creators all in a week time, their, their platforms were being silenced or banned. They're getting violations. So like people are having to tiptoe around what they can share on their social media. And I think that that is an expression of Jupiter and Gemini in addition to all these other layers. Definitely Pluto and Aquarius. Like these are things that have been, you know, developing in the past year. But the ban on TikTok, which is, you know, likely to occur, we're, we're starting to see a lot of that trickle in. And oh, yeah, just I, I'm remembering now that. There was a Supreme Court ruling that stated that the government is able to intervene if any uh, social media platform or, or organization is sharing mis misinformation about the presidency. So that is kind of this weird pipeline in, in how journalism is kind of journalism and information sharing is kind of under attack. So reframing because I feel like I got a little bit messy with what I'm trying to share but Jupiter and Gemini which entered Jupiter entered Gemini in May of this year and it will remain for a year at best it can be freedom of speech and like just the, this elevation of information and I think that that is true that will happen but because of Jupiter's kind of uh, dignity it doesn't have a lot of planetary strength in the sign of Gemini you know, what we're looking at is how, you know, certain platforms are being limited in what is being able to be shared, that media corporations and their their ability to actually share valid information, like we're, we're witnessing that in, in a very clear way. So not necessarily like that I'm attributing this past week to Jupiter and Gemini. I think it's just an overall theme that we're going to be, you know, working with and witnessing in the course of the next few months. So I probably need to do like an entire episode just about Jupiter and Gemini because it's a big theme and I'm not doing it justice by speaking about it in this small way right now. Uh, but yeah, so let's go into the upcoming week. There are two things that are going to kind of highlight this particular week. And that is that Mars and Uranus are coming together for a conjunction on July 15th, so next Monday. But that means that, you know, from Friday, Saturday, Sunday of this upcoming week, they're going to be very close together. So they're building towards a conjunction. And the Mars-Uranus conjunction, I think it's a very big and drastic departure from the previous week, whereas you know, a new moon and also Neptune retrograde and, and previously the, the previous week, Saturn retrograde. It's like those are all periods where we're kind of a lot more contemplative. There, there's a, a, a super strong internal sense that is like very active. And this is the week where we are starting to kind of affirm and and explore and, and experiment 
and to, to do things in, in newer ways because retrogrades ask us to do things in newer ways or when we revise something, we're having to kind of reroute just whether it's a little bit or a lot. But the Mars Uranus conjunction does speak to like spontaneity and like randomness that will be a, like a big flavor for this week. So one of the ways that I want you all to think about Uranus as an energy is that it is it is it's a lot about this idea of drama, because while we think of drama as negative, drama is a big part of any storyline. Like the storyline will unfold because of drama, because drama usually suggests like a, a twist in the plot. Right. And or we can think of it as like the furthering of the plot. And, uh, you know, that's the, the Greek etymology of the word drama is drom, which means to act. So, you know, Mars is a planet that has a lot to do with action. So there's a lot about, you know, you have you have the ability to initiate something this weekend and and something may initiate for you because that's kind of the nature of Uranus. Right? We're talking about the Trump trial and how that can look like a reversal. But there's like a, you know, there's an unexpected quality to what will be occurring this week. Um, but yeah, we'll feel it very, very much as Mars and Uranus are coming together by Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Something else to note, the last time they came together was in August of 2022. And um, that time it was a little different because it was with the North Node. But I, I did an entire YouTube video and article about how Uranus with the North Node, which happens about every uh, nine or 18 years by hard aspect, it relates to very specific developments in technology. And so the North Node and Uranus are not together right now, but um, that was the last time Mars and Uranus were together. And what I'm drawing in a connection with is that I was speaking directly to how that can look like more uh, cyber attacks, like, you know, cybersecurity, something to be very considerate of. So I really wouldn't doubt if that's something to be very aware of for this particular weekend or when the Mars Uranus conjunction come together. And so that's like a, a loose little prediction that I have for that. Um, I also think that the Mars Uranus conjunction will create a sleeplessness, as I was saying earlier, like it's a very uh, excitable energy. And, you know, Jupiter and Uranus came together for a conjunction in April. And my sleep has been kind of like, kind of wacky ever since then. And I don't know if you guys are relating to that. I mean, I have a tendency towards not really sleeping that much or not sleeping consistently. Uh, it's like air sign stuff. <laughs> but yeah, you know, so I have noticed with a, some of my other friends, like sleep hasn't really been that great since that period. So as Mars is being conjunct to Uranus this weekend, just be very aware that that can happen if you, you have a sensitive or like a wiry nervous system. So yeah, let me see my notes here. Pretty much like a contrast to the Mars Uranus conjunction is that the sun is getting ready to be in a trine with Saturn. And that is happening on Wednesday, July 10. It'll definitely be building on Tuesday the 9th and then Thursday the 11th. Like this also does shift from the energy of last week because as I was saying, Neptune and Saturn retrograde it can feel disorienting or we can feel kind of like unstable when it comes to like directionality. And this week really doesn't have that feeling. It has a lot more of like, we are starting to make greater commitments. We are starting to uh, lay some structures, lay some tiles down for our, our path that we're getting ready to walk. And it doesn't have to look like you're, you know, achieving the goal, the end goal. When Saturn is retrograde, that's not the that's not what's happening. When Saturn is retrograde, we're actually like starting to really internally organize. It's that restructuring that is uh, that is the biggest task. It's a nice contrast to last week because the Sun trine Saturn will allow us to make decisions that are much more stabilizing, and you'll have 
a little bit more of that bigger picture that has been organized. You know, over the next four months, four or five months of Saturn being retrograde, it's like the picture will start to become clearer and clearer. So this Sun trine Saturn is like one little, one little puzzle piece. I put it that way, but it, it definitely is a substantial one, if that makes sense. And then, you know, like that, that Mars Uranus conjunction at the end of the week feels more playful. So I would say schedule in a relative amount of openness for things to go in an intuitive way in the weekend and work very pragmatically and in an organized way and, and start to commit to yourself throughout the week. And you'll see the benefit. Um, you, you will benefit from just kind of having that sense of order in the middle of the week. And then the, the, there's a playfulness that actually is available at the end of the week. So these are the two main ideas for the week. And they are simple. But I would say that the Mars Uranus conjunction will definitely provide some some big twists and turns. We will see that collectively. We will definitely see that with the Trump case. <laughs> I'm not excited, y'all. And it can create a lot of anger and frustration. That's another layer of the Mars Uranus conjunction is that, you know, our Mars is a very important planet to be present with because it shows us where we have the tendency for anger or repression, right? It's like somewhere within that range. And Mars Uranus conjunction allows us to have this like a flash of authentic expression. And that can happen very quickly. It's, it's when we have an authentic impulse and then we have an authentic reaction to that and we're not holding back, that is actually more so how the Mars Uranus is going to, to show up this particular weekend. So if you have stuff that you're holding in, you're angry about something, <laughs> you know, lo and behold, that you will have a, a much more visceral relationship with it. And yeah, so it's a simple, simple message. Another thing that's happening this weekend is that Venus is entering Leo on July 11, Thursday, and it will remain there until um, the 4th of August. And so, yeah, Mercury is currently there as well. It's just a cuter time. It's, it's definitely more animated with the way that we like connect and relate to each other, right? When they were both in cancer, it's, it's more tender. It's a little more moody. So I always love some fun, like just taking like weird photos of myself when, <laughs> It, when Venus is in Leo, I mean, it's, it's a great time to to kind of like praise our, you know, that that image part of ourselves or, or to get very creative. So that's always, you know, fun and cute. And there, there's a time and place for everything, y'all. So, yeah, you know, I hope that you enjoy this message for the week. It's simple, but, you know, like I think having a break is always nice because you know, usually during those full moon and new moon weeks, there's just so much more that is happening and being realized. Not that there's nothing happening this week, but thank you and bless. Um, things about me, um, the full natal mentorship, that the 12-month mentorship is starting up on July 21st. So this is kind of, we're, we're coming to that, that, that starting point for the mentorship. And this is such an amazing, amazing cohort it's a small cohort i i interview everyone to just make sure that there's like synergy because it is a big commitment for you it's a big commitment for me to to be working together so closely for an entire year but what you'll gain out of this is a very deep relationship to astrology uh, uh intimacy with your healing process but also um, a big part of my gift with astrology is the language and then my first teacher really taught me a lot about language and I think that our ability to work with astrology is really based on our comprehension. Our language is going to be based on our comprehension. And the comprehension that occurs with astrology is so many different layers. Like it's not just the intellectual way of understanding the moon. It's like we have to know these things, how they feel, how they actually show up in people's lives, what it shows up like on a psychological level, what it shows up like on a mundane level out in the world. And so when you're learning astrology, you're learning about all of the various forms 
of how archetype or how planetary energy is just going to show up on all these various layers and levels, micro, macro, inner, outer. And yeah, this is where the healing comes in, is you're able to hold your understanding of life and your own experience and the experience of others in these ways. It's really meaningful and beautiful. And so, yeah, um, you know, if you want to learn more about the mentorship program, just fill out an application and we can have a, a chat. Um, that's on my website, okastrologyschool.com. I have a so, so many different classes at this point. Um, Oak Astrology School has been around for since 2020, was getting it started in 2019, and so it's been a beautiful ride. Um, if you are interested in a reading, uh, feel free to look at my offerings on my consulting page, oakastrology.com, and bless. Thank you so much.